Hey guys, so today I have a bit of a longer video for you. I like fast paced, quick videos that keep attention. However, this video, I'm gonna kind of open up my bag and do a walkthrough and share with you uh, my workflow and how I organize my bag a certain way and hopefully it'll be an opportunity for you guys to maybe pick up a few tips or gather a few ideas from me with how I do it. I've loved watching these videos of other filmmakers and photographers. Uh, though they can be kind of long and boring because I just, I let the camera roll. So this little emoji here, he'll come with you on the journey. So when I make mistakes or I fumble over a quote or whatnot, he will uh, make a correction because I hate when I get mistakes and I'm telling you the wrong information. So the next 20 minutes, here we go. So jumping into it here, uh, the bag I use for my equipment as a carry-on is the Think Tank Airport Takeoff. This is now the version one. They've since come out with a version two. Uh, but I actually still like the version one for a few key features, but I won't get into that uh, specifically. So this bag, uh, the measurements fit in the carry-on specifications. And I have this thing loaded full. Unique feature about this is it actually has a backpack in here, so if I'm going to a rugged location, I can put it on my back. I rarely ever use that. I've only used it on a handful of occasions. All of them I can remember <laughs> very clearly because I desperately needed it. So sometimes when I go to the airport, I have to throw this on one shoulder using this, and then I have my other carry-on backpack on the other shoulder, and then I wheel in both of my uh, Pelican Air cases, so I have four bags total. So. My other carry-on carries clothes and toiletries and is light, but this is the one that I, uh, I wheel around. In the version one, just it also has this handle here, uh, which the version two doesn't have, which I really like, this handle. So opening it up here, let me uh, get this in position. So first and foremost, even before I get into, when uh, this front pocket here is for uh, your laptop. And I store my passport right here in this little flap because when I'm checking in at an airport, I can flip it up like this and I can unzip my passport. It's right there. I actually don't even have to bend down. So uh, when you get on an airplane, it's important to board very quickly. So I flip this up and I pull out my laptop and I call this my little escape pod. I always think of Star Wars when the, the drones were escaping in A New Hope. But outside of that visual, I, I grab this and uh, this has my laptop, has my charger, uh, noise canceling headphones, uh, mask, sometimes I put a granola bar snack in here. It's got everything I need for in flight. So I quickly pull that out and throw that on my seat and this bag just got a lot smaller, so uh, it can definitely fit easy into any of the overheads. So opening it up now, a lot of people, they leave their bag, uh, their bag's empty and they load it up based upon the project they're shooting. For me, I don't work that way. My bag remains the same. My bag always remains in the same setup. So uh, anytime I have a project come up, I'm ready to go. I don't have to load things in or worry about forgetting something. It should always look the same and uh, it just creates peace of mind and it's easy. So uh, going through it here, starting with the front, uh, these spaces I kind of put different things in. Uh, I usually always have two of my hard drives here. These are, uh, let me pull one of these out. So what these, these are, is these are four terabyte drives. Um, it's actually two terabytes and two terabytes next to each other. And I do a RAID 1 configuration. So um, I'll be editing on one of the drives and it'll automatically back up all the footage uh, to the other drive. So these worked really good for me um, to back up footage and uh, work on the road. And oftentimes I'll just put a different company um, or the different project on different drives, and I have quite a few of these. On this side at the moment, I have uh, the small HD screen, which just fits there, and then I put the charger next to it that fits in. So, uh, moving along here, 
The, uh, my second Canon battery goes right in this little spot here. Uh, fits well. Then this is a spot for uh, one of my lenses. Usually my 100 millimeter macro goes in this spot. It fits well. And, uh, but I substitute all of my lenses uh, occasionally. So these two spots often get interchanged at the moment. This is the 16 to 35 Mark II. Usually always take that. The 24 uh, 105, usually always take that one with me. The, uh, the 85 millimeter, which I have right here, uh, I don't usually bring for every project, but if the project would, would call for it, I would just substitute it out and it, uh, it fits on in there. So uh, moving along here, sorry, this is a live video, so I just gotta keep, keep going. So I did a video on this. This is my world traveler, and then I have three adapters for charging multiple things. In the other video, I had a, a red and white, but I just uh, got a backup, which is all black, and I'm gonna use the all black one for a little bit, just cause it, everything else is all black. Then on this side, I have a uh, hurricane, a wind blower, a uh, little cleaner. These are kind of traditional stuff. And uh, then I have the, um, the viewfinder for my Canon 1DX. I just kind of store in there. I don't put the little rubber view thing on because uh, the camera fits tight in this spot. And uh, yeah, it just keeps it flush. I don't ever really need that on, it doesn't bug me. So here's the 1DX, the, my main camera, which I'm shooting with at the moment. And uh, I use these little, these little Arca Swiss quick release plates. And part of the reason I use these is when they're attached, if I'm on the go, I can just drop the camera in with the quick release plate on uh, if I'm moving around throughout the day. So that's one less step I have to do. When I'm traveling long distance, I usually just, I, there's another plate down in here, but in this little slot here, I just store uh, the, the quick release plates, and then for long distances, I won't have the plate on. So this setup here is kind of unique. At the moment, I have my, um, so this, this is kind of an interesting little thing. So this viewfinder I got, there's a magnet around my camera. Uh, this goes on and it works perfect because I can still use touch focus, um, but, but it'll block a lot of the sun if uh, that's what I need for the shoot. Or if I need the full viewfinder, I can click this on. Oh shoot, I uh, kind of standing awkward so the camera can see it. But you click this on here and then you can put that on like that. And uh, then I can use that as a viewfinder. And that system works well between nothing, this little thing, and then of course all the way. So this space here, uh, I rotate this a lot. So this is where uh, I hold my memory cards. So here's my card cord. My card reader is in here for the CFast cards. Then I have uh, backup CFast cards, backup just regular SD cards, and it all stays in one compartment. It's got my name on in case this was ever misplaced. This is in very important piece of equipment, but it also serves as a divider. So if it's just the camera on its own, that'll protect the camera and I can store stuff in here. Or if I'm moving around throughout the day and I have a lens attached to the camera, I can slide this over here and now the camera can slide in here with a lens attached to it. Uh, once again, when I'm running and gunning, that works well. Uh, but of course, for long trips, I won't have a lens attached and use this space here. So uh, this little tool is great. I use this for taking quick release plates on and off for tightening. It can go on my wrist at times. This cord right here is the charger cord for my Canon 1DX batteries. I kind of wish they didn't give me this huge uh, plate, but, uh, but this is what it comes with to charge the batteries, both batteries can charge at once, which is nice, but it takes up so much space. And of course that cord goes with it. Under here, 
tucked away is my Canon 50 millimeter lens, which always comes with me. I use this uh, a lot of the time. It's a great lens and because it's smaller, it fits in that little spot there. So back in here, it's a little harder for you to see, but this is where I store my uh, wireless microphones. I, uh, let me just focus this up here. So I have a green set and then I'm actually using the red set to talk into, but I put a little green tape and then I put tape on top to recognize them. And of course, green and red and they all fit uh, nicely in these little compartments. They have a lot of space and it worked well to put this right on top of them. Over here, I store extra wireless microphones, uh, 3.5 millimeter jacks. Let's just take a peek into here. Uh, splitter, just a lot of kind of little cords and things. Then in here, I have all the little parts for microphones and like little dead cats and, and foam things and all that stuff. In this, I have quite self-explanatory Tiffin and D filters. I have the, uh, I believe this is an 82 millimeter right here. So this is variable ND and uh, this is for the 16 to 35, which is the widest lens I have. But this is the 71 or 72. It is 70, it's 77 millimeter, but most of my lenses are either 77 or 71. So also in here, I have an adjuster. So this will uh, take a 77 millimeter lens and actually no, this one's 67 to 72. And this one will turn to 77. I put this on the back of that, it'll turn 77 into 71. So I constantly use these little adjusters. Uh, to make sure it can fit on all. I, I use this one for the macro lens. That's why the 67 to 72 is in there. And uh, the Tiffin ND filters work great. I used to use Fotka, which were cheaper, only about $10 a filter. These run about $100 a filter, but shooting in 4K, you need high quality glass throughout and can't put something cheap in front of all your, uh, your well-made and quality equipment. So in here, this is the, uh, the 70 to 200 with IS. This is a great lens. I've used this for a long time. I recently reviewed the Canon uh, 28 to 300 millimeter lens, which I am very, very like, and I'm very, very interested in getting, which would go in this real estate in here. However, the 77 is just really great. And I don't know if I can travel without it. So I haven't switched it out or gotten the 28 to 300 yet, but this is a great lens, uh, hides itself down in here. And uh, the Tiffin fits, it just all kind of fits together well. So I leave my bag this way 24 seven and it is, uh, it's great. Trying to think through anything that I missed. So up here I store money for different countries, some business cards, uh, just kind of some odds and ends, some pens and, and lens clean cleaners in there. And uh, down in this little pocket here, this is where I usually put my bag tags. As soon as I check in, I always leave my key uh, to my home down here because I don't bring my car keys or the whole set with, a I have a pocket knife on my car keys, so I don't want to take that when I travel. And then I put my bag tags in here. So that's pretty much my bag. I'm, I'm sure it'll adjust and I will uh, add, oh, this is a, uh, a little shotgun microphone. Things are a little tight. Let me pull this out. So this is the uh, Sennheiser uh, MKE 400, little shotgun microphone with a dead cat. I'll use this for just getting uh, audio when I'm shooting B-roll and it's not too big, so it just nicely fits in there. So also down here, just as I'm, I have kind of fits in this little pocket. I have this, and this is where I keep my backup batteries for uh, the shotgun microphone, and then also my uh, wireless mics. I don't use rechargeable batteries yet for them. Uh, I just wouldn't really have the room for the charging kit for the rechargeable batteries, so I still just use them, use real batteries. 
So as I said, this bag here pretty much always stays the same so I can grab and go when I travel. After a long trip, usually I'll take everything out and clean it, uh, clean the lenses of dust and just kind of do an overhaul because it can get pretty kind of dirty and that way the next trip I go on, it's all set and ready to go. So this bag over here was my first camera bag and it's just a backpack. It's pretty big as you can see, it's slightly smaller, but it does fit just about to the specific uh, requirements of the smaller carry-on for, uh, for airplanes. And usually it's on my back when I'm checking in or getting on the airplane. So people, I've never been hassled for this on my back. If they would make me put it in that little metal measuring thing, uh, I'm sure it would fit because I'm pretty much only putting clothes in here. So it used to of course be my camera bag, but now uh, I'll fill this with clothes here and the reason I have clothes with me is in case I have to change flights or in case a flight gets delayed or I have to spend a night in a hotel that wasn't planned. I now have a uh, change of clothes, some socks, some underwear and uh, pretty much half the clothes I'm bringing with me I can usually fit in this space and it's light being on my back. Uh, I just recently switched. This is actually a mirrorless think tank bag uh, but I use it as my toiletry bag and it just, yeah, it just really works well. It just, uh, yeah, it opens from the top and I like the design. So this is my toiletry bag. Reason toiletry bag sits right here is oftentimes if you have to pull out liquids or you have a little clear bag, you can just unzip the top part, slide your clear bag of liquids, set that in the tray, and then it's easy to put back in. That's why it sits uh, right in the front. And of course you need your toiletry bag if you have to spend a night in the hotel that's unexpected. So these are the two bags that I, I uh, carry on with me. This bag usually is about 15 pounds on my back, it's pretty light. This bag is about 43 pounds, it's really heavy. The US doesn't have weight restrictions on carry-ons, but oftentimes when I get to other country, they'll have weight restrictions on carry-ons. So they'll hassle me about this, but I'll say, well, you know, I took it on the plane coming into your country, so why can't I take it out? And some people are sticklers, but I usually eventually tell them there's a camera in it and I show them and I've never had to check this on a flight uh, that I was never for. I've, I've never been forced to check this on a flight, even though it's over the weight restrictions for some other countries upon carry-ons. So I take these two bags with me when I uh, carry on the airplane and then I have two big, large Pelican air cases that I check and you can check out my Pelican Air case review. A link to that will be following this video if you wanna check out. Uh, I explain a little bit how I travel with, with those two cases. Throw in this in here last minute. But this is the, uh, the Helipack Think Tank bag. So I use this for my drone. Sometimes I use the foam case the Phantom 4 Pro comes in. Sometimes I'll use this. The reason I'll use this is if I know I'm gonna to have to be hiking to a location with the drone, I will, uh, I will bring this bag instead. So this bag will take up half of one of my Pelican Air cases and pretty self-explanatory. Batteries, controller, uh, charger, the propellers and everything are uh, up in here. I know you can't really see it well. The propellers and cords are up there. And then the main drone here. And I use these pockets here for, I'll take the ADD as my backup camera and I'll put it in here with uh, one of the uh, EFS lenses in here and uh, yeah so these spaces work great for a couple of extra uh, camera equipment that I don't take in my uh, main bag. So this bag goes in half of one of my Pelican Air cases and then the other half of the Pelican Air case is usually some more clothes or some shoes etc. So I wanted to throw that in there for you guys. So I hope this was very helpful to you guys. I don't want this to be about how expensive the equipment is or how fancy. That's not what this video is about at all. It's just about me sharing my workflow with you and where I'm at. I've started out with entry level cameras and through the years I've added equipment and, and you know, just kind of built along. It's, it's fascinating to me because I'm curious to even look back in a couple years at my workflow and to see how it's evolved. So hopefully you learned some things from this and it was helpful. If you have any questions or you think I missed anything, feel free to add a comment in this section below. I'll do my best to help out. Thanks for watching. Thank you Mr. Emoji for your help. 
we will see you in the next video. Peace.